Hi, um, welcome to uh, our next session. Um, I would like to introduce a friend of mine, uh, Krista Dudley. Um, she is working with a Google Lunar X Prize team, uh, Brednet, and uh, she hopes to land some stuff on the moon. So I'm going to let her talk about how she's going to do that. Okay, um, I'm not specifically talking about um, uh, Fred Ned's mission, although if you want to talk to me about that, um, uh, please talk to me after the talk. Um, what I'm here to talk about is uh, uh, one of the primary concepts of our mission. We're doing something pretty different than most of the other X-Prize teams in that we want to make every as much of what we do available to as many people as possible. Um, the idea being that we don't want to, to uh, hold our information in the cell. So, um, I'm going to talk about the why and how of open source space. So, uh, starting with the why. Um, uh, a lot of people around here in the industry really understand that um, there are traditionally silos of information. We probably would have been a lot further along had um, there been some opportunity for information sharing. Uh, NASA keeps everything pretty much locked down, and defense contractors are not even about to um, share um, anything that they don't have to with each other. So there's a, been a lot of reinvention. I've spoken with NASA engineers, and, and they maintain every every single mission. They completely redesign the wheel. They completely start over from scratch with every mission. And so um, there's not a lot of building and not a lot of growth um, that could happen. Um, and then moving towards the new space, um, there are a lot of guys out there, a lot of players, um, and it's really encouraging and refreshing, but um, the smaller organizations are more fragile. Um, uh, through no fault of their own, they might have funding swept out from under them, or um, some business catastrophe that um, uh, causes them to have to um, end, end their business. and. Um, uh, I'd hate to see that technology die with them. Um, and then the last of which is um, to be able to stand on each other's shoulders, really. We're all giants here, right? <laughs> so um, uh, There's other reasons, too. Those are kind of the obvious ones. But um, a lot of people start off as hobbyists. Um, most of the folks that um, are on Team Fredman are hobbyists. So the the idea is uh, bring more people into space. Um, if there's something that they can work on, if there's a tool that they can use that they know about that's available, they're a lot more likely to um, believe it's possible. Um, and the public opinion that that um, engenders, we, we just saw the talk on space tourism, which was a different form of public opinion than I think is entirely healthy for the space organization. Um, because it, it kind of sets the idea that space is science fiction and that science fiction isn't necessarily reality or isn't necessarily in touch with reality. By having solid, um, honest designs out there and uh, something that people can see and understand, uh, it, it gives a sense of reality to the industry, a sense of immediacy that, um, that sets it in the present tense instead of the future 10, 20, 30, 50 years out. Because that's what it becomes, is 50 years out if you start looking too far ahead. Um, and opening up the possibilities, um, encouraging people to tinker with space more. So, um, the challenge is how. Um, there's a lot of issues. Um, if you're going to become a successful business, if you're going to employ all those engineers, you need to make money, and you need to get contracts, and you need to sell something that nobody else sells. Um, so you need to protect your intellectual property. Um, and uh, trade secrets and core technologies are um, really necessary to your business, and so how could you possibly deal with that um, conflict? Um, there are a couple of traditional ways that people in the industry do this, um, advising open source projects, um, and uh, attending conferences, um, sharing in um, open source committees, and that sort of thing. Um, also, sometimes discarded designs are um, made available. Uh, that's not very often, and 
and I remember speaking with some industry people uh, sharing safety advice because there's nothing more threatening to the industry than a major accident um, slowing everybody down and that would totally undermine um, totally undermine the uh, whole uh, public perception. So um, other things that you can that can be done um, that would change the way um, open sourcing could work uh, for business, a retirement plan. Um, this is a common thing that software companies do when they're done with a piece of software. When they've decided to no longer support it, they'll open source it, um, give it to the community, and the community can maintain it. There are a lot of uh, software companies that are still in business that a portion of their code base is closed source, still under uh, development and maintenance uh, from the, the in-house um, people, but they, they, when, when they've moved on to the next version, they'll put typically three or four versions back out um, so that they don't have to support it. But there's a lot of opportunity for um, people to learn and grow. And one of the biggest interesting things about that is um, it gives them a, a base of people who are familiar with their software enough to um, develop, uh, to, to understand how it works. So if they wanted to employ somebody, they typically go to this, this community and find people who already knew how their software worked who had an interest in passion in, in that particular um, area and um, who they wouldn't have to train very much to, to um, bring them up to speed on the current um, uh, versions of things. Um, also, uh, another advantage of this retirement plan is um, when smaller companies are just starting out, they might use the old things and they might use the free um, open source stuff. And, um, as the business grows, they realize they need something more robust, better supported, um, or um, more um, more powerful, and they move. They, it's a very easy transition from the open source to the closed source, um, and there are a lot of business plans. And that's another thing. Um, secondary designs. Um, Space is a complicated business, and getting there, you have your core technologies and your secondary technologies. And the secondary technologies can um, give you, uh, they give you the parts you need, but they're not necessary for, um, they're not necessary for, uh, for um, your business, your basic business model. So, the, the business model is, is um, not injured if you happen to want to, like I'm into communication systems and it's the most frustrating things in the world to, to deal with communication systems that are secondary to every other system. We, we saw the presentation on the video, that was um, a, a secondary issue to, to communicate, but um, these things still aren't open source. They're still not talking about the protocols. They're still not talking about um, their electronics. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> okay, um, and then we have the uh, uh, secondary designs uh, and alternative designs. Um, alternative designs, you, you test a bunch of different things and you come up with, well, this is the optimal design, but you have three suboptimal designs. It's entirely reasonable, uh, especially if you don't have them very close together and you're trying to several different tracks to to um, allow that track that you dead-ended to, to go to the open source community. Maybe they can do something with it that you're not interested in doing. Um, a lot of um, a lot of designs I, uh, with the people I've, I've heard you talk to, um, they get into this, somewhere into a preliminary stage and to some, decide to take a different route um, or uh, uh, other ideas come up uh, that have nothing to do with a core business function. And so those can be um, uh, open sourced as well. So um, that's pretty much all I had to say. Mostly I was just, I, I just like to try and cheer on the open source movement because we really want to have uh, more going on with 
um, sharing information and making things public, open, and available. So that um, going back to the original discussion about um, the public perception, it's 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 a real frustration for me because so many people I talk to believe that it's so far in the future that any reasonable person who can't afford a six-figure vacation um, could do anything interesting in space at any time in their lifetime. And I believe it's possible, it's just nobody understands how, how close we could be if we just invested in that sort of technology. So, anyway, I'd like to open it up for discussion. Um, I'm not an expert on any of these by any means. Um, I know some of the retirement plans, there's, in addition to the retirement plans, there's also an option of, uh, 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 I don't want to say a poison pill option, but um, in bankruptcy, your um, a, a reason that um, the retirement plan is kind of um, challenging is in bankruptcy, um, Many of the assets of the um, company uh, go to people who never develop them. And I'd like to see um, some sort of development. Um, and there are, there are different things you can do with commitments, um, much like they do with the uh, privacy policies, that prevent them from being sold to someone who won't use them. So, but it, it, there's a lot of um, opportunities out there, and it's just something um, I think that it bears more thought to consider how not only we can build a community for, um, or, or build the product that we're working on, but build community and the, a faith in what we're doing. So anyway, I'd like to open it up to questions, discussions, ideas, thoughts. Now you mentioned you're working on a, a Google Lunar X Prize right. team, and that's certainly, at least conceptually, the type of thing that should be amenable to sharing information. Have right. you uh, found any pushback from within your team or your sponsors about not wanting the stuff to get out there where your immediate competitors can see it? Okay, um, we are fundamentally, and, and it's part of our our uh, mission uh, plan to start out with open source, um, and so that's a non-negotiable part of our. Part of, of our uh, mission, so it's we we have had a lot of questions about well if you're all open source how do you make money how are you going to win well we're open sourcing the designs we're not you know talking about our timelines we're not talking about what we're doing before we do it um, open source doesn't have to be before the fact um, as I mentioned in the retirement discussion it can be well after the fact. Um, that's one issue, um, the, the timelines, the, the greater, bigger picture um, is another issue. Um, and also, um, in addition to developing the, the technology, we're also developing the expertise. Um, and so anybody who wants to leverage this technology, they can try and work it out themselves, or they can come to us to get the, the real answers. So um, we're working out partnerships as well. We've got a partnership with NASA. We just got a, a new contract um, extension with them. So um, we're pretty excited about that. So, yes? Yeah, are there any existing open source licenses that apply to this, or are you guys creating one like that? I don't understand. Okay, we're, we're using the canonical license for Team FredNet. Um, it's it, <laughs> uh, going back to not reinventing the wheel. Um, the canonical license is interesting in that it allows the original um, the original creator to own the intellectual property as well as it's kind of a sharing arrangement so that the original creator can own and develop on it and sell it um, under their own name so they don't have to give that up. So. I'm having a lot of trouble hearing you. There, there's a DARPA FCS program for right. merchant space craft, and uh, the requirement there was to release almost everything except actually boxes. Right. Uh, there are no boxes for this program. Right. Is there any requirement for Well, we considered a lot of different 
licenses, we decided to go with canonical because we really wanted um, our um, contributors to be able to own their own property. And they, we want to um, give them that um, right and authority to do what they wanted with what they contributed, um, while at the same time maintaining our use of that. So it's a, it's a really innovative, oh, it's a really innovative <laughs> um, opportunity for them to, um, for us to share um, the ownership of that. So. Okay. How can people get a hold of you? Oh, how can people get a hold of me? Well, um, come see me afterwards. Um, I have business cards, and um, also you can uh, contact Team Frednet on teamfrednet.org. So it's all one word, Team Frednet.